This video will show you how to install Elden Ring Reforged, an overhaul mod for Elden Ring that I think is pretty cool. So, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have Elden Ring installed on Steam. Have it up to date, and a useful thing is just click play. Make sure that it's installed properly. If you can get to the title screen, all is good. I know I can, so I'm going to close that preemptively. Once you've got Elden Ring installed, you should visit Nexus Mods to find the Elden Ring Reforged page on the website. A link to this will be in the description of the video. Once you're on this page, go to Files and click Manual Download. You'll need an account in Nexus Mods to be able to download files from the website. If you don't have an account, you can go to the Elden Ring Reforged Discord server in the Updates tab there is usually a link to a Google Drive file for the mod. You can click on this, usually finding the most recent version, and download the file here. However, for me, I find this is convenient. If you have premium, you can do it fast, or otherwise just go slow download and download the mod into your downloads. This will take a while. So in the meantime, whilst that's downloading, what you can do is you can find a place that you're going to install the mod. For me, I'm going to put it in my F drive. So you want to create a folder and call it something that you remember easily. I'm going to call it Reforged. This folder wants to be in somewhere where you have easy access to and are unlikely to forget where it is, because you'll be going to this folder whenever you want to launch the mod or whenever you want to update it. Now few extra tips here is this folder that you've created can't be in a few places. It can't be on your desktop, it can't be in the Elden Ring game folder, and it also shouldn't be in a place where a cloud tool like OneDrive or Dropbox might manage that folder, because those tools usually don't like mass changes to files, which will happen quite frequently when you're updating the mod. And if it reverts to a previous version, it can cause corruption and other issues. So the general rule of thumb is just put it in somewhere normal and relatively easy to access, like a relatively high place in C or any of your other main drives. The file has now finished downloading for me. So I'm going to open a new file explorer, which little tip, if you shift click things down here, it opens a new copy of it. It's very fun. Um, and go to my downloads and find the file that I've just downloaded. I'm going to open this and then I'm going to open the folder inside and then I'm going to select everything and I'm going to put it into the folder I just made, this reforged folder in my F drive. It's going to copy it across and this might take a while so I might cut this. And now that that's all copied across into my reforged folder, uh, we're very nearly done. What you now want to do is use or click on the launch Elden Ring Reforged effect. This is the launcher for the mod. So if you're clicking on this, you will probably get this. It says, oh no, it's bad. Don't worry, it's not. Uh, if you get more info, you can now get access to a run anyway button, which if you click, it will open a command prompt. This is gonna do some more stuff. Yes, I want to do this, so Gideon is the app used by Reforge to modify uh, icons and menus. So I'll click Run, and now it's going to do some stuff here. So you guys see it's UI textures for Elden Ring. It's the packing, it's successful. Now it's packing the archive again to actually add them to the game. There we go, now it's doing it again, and it's done. And that will close itself, and then that will close itself, and now we're blinded by the intro screen to Elden Ring. And we get the title screen. It's going to make a really loud noise when I click. You can see on this menu if the mod is installed correctly because it will say Elden Ring Reforged, as you can see here. You can also check your version down here where it says Reforged version 105E. That's the version of the mod that we just installed, and that's all good. If you have installed this from Brush, you might not have any characters, and that's fine, to be honest. Your vanilla characters still exist perfectly fine, and you can access them by launching the vanilla game anytime. 
this here because you will probably have noticed we didn't touch any vanilla files during the install here. This is all standalone. This doesn't touch the vanilla game at all, so you will never be banned for anti-cheat stuff. Um, and you can always access the vanilla game by just launching through Steam. If you want to play the modded version, then you launch it using this bat file that you have in your folder. I'd recommend against trying to copy over a vanilla character into the mod because it changes a lot of how you progress through the game and it sort of detracts from the experience. If you really, really want to access your characters, there's probably a way you can find out how to do it and that's probably on the Discord server. However, you won't have any characters most likely here. The reason I did is because this is actually not my first install, I've got another install. Um, but yeah, you're, you're done. You, you can play the mod now. Well done. Um, you might want to play Seamless Cop because that's fun. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. It's the same thing, files, manual download, slow download, and get it to download takes much less time because it doesn't have any content really. Now the important thing here, don't touch this. Go into the Seamless Corp folder and only copy the local and the ERSC DLL folder. Those are the only files you need. Go to where you originally installed Reforged and go into your DLL folder and then your active folder and copy just these two files across. You will notice there is already an ERSC settings ini file in here. This existed before you even added Seamless Corp. This is because Reforge uses its own save extension, ERR. So this is a pre-configured file. And that's why if you copy that across, it will cause issues because suddenly it won't have this. And it also will have a bunch of numbers here that are not correct because as it says in the comment, not compatible with Elden Ring Reforged. Reforged has its own difficulty options and stuff. So that's fine. You and anyone else you're planning on seamlessly coping with need to add a password here. That is for you to decide. And I'd leave the rest of this as it is. I'm also going to show you how to add some of the compatible uh, other DLL mods. These are similarly in the DLL folder and then in the optional folder you'll find a bunch of stuff. These are fun things like removing the vignette, removing chromatic aberration. These come pre-packaged with the mod. And what you need to do is you need to, let's say I have an ultra wide monitor. I would select this file. I would copy it. And first of all, I double check that there aren't any other files in here that are to do with this mod. See, cause you can see unlock the FPS as two files. In this case, I would select both of those, but I just want this one. So I'd copy this, I'd go back and I'd put this into the active folder. There we go, and now you would have ultra-wide uh, UI and stuff. When updating the mod, it's very easy. What you want to do is you want to download the new version of the mod. Do the same thing, files, download. And it is as easy as opening that zip that you've just downloaded, selecting everything and copying it over into your reforged directory. When it prompts you to update, say overwrite and you should be able to double click launch and everything will work good if you've done it properly. I think that's everything. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Now go ahead, play Reforged. It's a good mod. Have fun.